Hi, I'm Mark Cooper, board certified gastroenterologist. Let's explore the fascinating autoimmune condition of eosinophilic esophagitis. What is an eosinophil? It's a specialized type of white blood cell. And you've probably actually met them before. Typical lab work includes a white blood count and detailed underneath is the eosinophil count. It's usually pretty low and that's because the eosinophils don't generally travel so much in the blood as reside in your tissues where they're waiting to find would be parasites and cancer, which they're specially trained to attack. They're funny looking guys. They've got a bilobular nucleus that looks like something you'd see floating around on a lava lamp. They're also loaded with these toxic granules that store the chemicals that when released attack those would be pathogens. And most of the time they're of a huge help to us, but at times they become dysregulated and they cause disease. Eosinophils are most famous for causing asthma. Eosinophils are rarely present in your airway. They're not meant to react to pollen or other environmental triggers, but when they do, they can cause a lot of damage and repeated over time, it makes it difficult to breathe. The same phenomenon can occur in eosinophil esophagitis. In this case, eosinophils react to food triggers and through repeated scarring of the esophagus, a person begins to have difficulty swallowing. People develop eosinophilic esophagitis when they're relatively young and they may first notice that they're having trouble swallowing tough meats or hard bread. And they'll adapt their diet to avoid those. They may also note that they have some other associated conditions like asthma or some atopic dermatitis. They also commonly have siblings that have similar conditions and symptoms because this is a genetic condition. And as they adapt their diet, they can start to become more and more restricted in what they eat. Eventually though, they can have so much trouble swallowing that they come into the emergency room with a food bolus or food impaction. This is when food is unable to pass down the esophagus and similarly unable to be dislodged, to be removed. It's stuck and as pressure builds, the person has an extreme amount of discomfort. They're unable to even swallow water, not even their own saliva. And this becomes a big emergency because as that pressure builds, it can actually tear the esophagus and the bacteria that have accumulated in the esophagus are released to cause infection in the chest or abdomen. And for this reason, when a patient comes to the emergency room with a food impaction, this is an endoscopic emergency in which we're working to very quickly remove the food. And then we will often actually dilate the esophagus to help open it up and to prevent recurrence of this. Of people coming to the emergency room with a food impaction, nearly half of them will ultimately prove to have eosinophilic esophagitis. So how is eosinophilic esophagitis actually diagnosed? Because if you have trouble swallowing, you can have a half dozen other conditions to cause what we call dysphagia, or trouble swallowing. So what you need is an endoscopy, a procedure that we discussed in another video. When I do an endoscopy, I'm looking for the characteristic appearance of that repeated scarring. I'm also looking to see if there's other conditions present like an ulcer, or any inflammation that might suggest an infection. But critical here is that I actually take biopsies because the eosinophils are microscopic. I'm not gonna see them. They can be patchy in their inflammatory response. They may be here in the esophagus, but not there. And so as we go about taking biopsies, we wanna make sure that we take them at several areas of the esophagus so that we can deliver the pathologist a collection of tissue so that they can find the eosinophils and give us back a count of how many there were. If there were a lot of them, and there's no other reason for there to be that inflammation, like an ulcer, maybe a fungal infection, then that person very likely has eosinophilic esophagitis. So why would the eosinophils come into our esophagus and reach such havoc? Food passes through the esophagus on its way down to the stomach. It's expected to be there. And eosinophils are present in other areas of the intestine and colon where they're on the lookout for any parasites that may have accidentally come in with our food. Why would eosinophils do this in the esophagus? It does seem to be that they're reacting to specific food triggers. And yet these are nutritious foods that most of the time we would safely eat. We don't know exactly why this becomes a trigger. It does seem to have a genetic component. And also interestingly, it seems to be becoming more common Again, we're not really sure if that's a true increase in prevalence, the more and more we think it may be, or is this just simply that we as gastroenterologists should become more aware that we need to diagnose and treat this condition. Biology answers our questions with new curiosities, which makes eosinophilic esophagitis such an interesting condition in the field of medicine so fascinating. 
I hope you have found this interesting. If you have, please subscribe to the channel to get new content as it becomes available, including future videos where we'll discuss some of those triggers and treatments of eosinophilic esophagitis. This is meant to be general information and not diagnostic, so if you have questions, please seek advice from your provider. Please give us comments and feedback below. I appreciate your time and be safe.